Welcome to another episode of Rough Talk VR, a weekly podcast with in-depth game reviews, exclusive developer interviews, and the latest MetaQuest and virtual reality news. We join our hosts, the father-son team of D. Scruffles and Stratus today, as they spend another episode breaking down and discussing the world of virtual reality. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. We're fresh back from PAX East. Ah, oh, dude, the car engine's still warm. <laughs> walked in and came right upstairs. Yep, came back Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon by the time we came back. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was it was another good year at PAX East. Very poor showing of VR, but That's overall a good time. Yeah, we had, we had fun. There was really for VR just Shell Games and Pin City that we talked to last year from Studio 217. Yep. And they actually looked a lot better than last year. Not that last year Pin City looked bad or anything, but... No, it was... Uh, I mean, they only had, like, real limited levels, and now they're almost 30 on a demo. So. And it looked... If, I, if I'm not crazy, it looked a lot more polished yeah, on the screen when they were showing it off, too. A lot more smooth. I think more background stuff. Mm-hmm. I know last year when we talked to them, you know, they were... They, it was like a student project, that, or project they started while they were students, and they worked on it part-time. I'll be honest, I had the expectation going in that it was going to look pretty much the same that it did last year. And it looked, you know, last year it looked like a game that, you know, conceptually would be cool. And I kind of wanted to check it out. And this year it looked like a game like I wish that was on App Lab right now. I mean, it looks App Lab ready. I mean, but A, I'm happy to see they came back. I Mm -hmm. It's not free, so... For an indie dev of two to make the financial expense to throw a booth for a four day convention is pretty pretty huge. Yeah, and they but they're getting... in, they've obviously invested their time and they're not scared to invest the money that it's going to take to get their game out. But yeah, it was good to see them back. Yeah, and they had people trying their booth and you know having a good time. Most importantly, they had better location this year too. Looked like a little bit of a bigger booth too, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then. Shell Games, they were showing off Silent Slayer. Yeah, that was fun to watch. Yeah. It was actually really cool to see people get jump scared on it when they failed. Yeah, I didn't know there were actual jump scares in it based on the previews and such. So it was cool to know that, no, there's jump scares in it. There was a couple people because not a lot of, you know, not everybody's tried VR. Despite what well, no, some people not. deep in the forest might Just think. Look you at know? the numbers. There's no way. Yeah, so a lot of people hadn't tried VR yet, and they were trying it out, and they were getting scared, but like crazy, trying it out. Yeah, there were a couple people curled up in the fetal position, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> to me, it wasn't that scary. It was more of a, a puzzle experience. I got to try it out. It was one vampire, you know, slaying level. It's mm-hmm. a, it The concept of the game, you know, they showed it off at the Rough Talk VR Gaming Showcase, not just showed it off with a trailer, gave a really in-depth you know, what the game is, but it, there's a vampire in a coffin and you got to solve a series of puzzles to open up that coffin, you know, kind of seal them, lock them in place, find the heart and stab it through the chest to, yeah. to finally slay the vampire. And the first time I tried it, you know, there's these, these nails. I put the pliers right up to it and <laughs> I just peeled right back and that nail dropped to the ground. Yeah. Boom, you, instant loss. You and everyone else who played it, yeah. except for one one young lady I saw playing it who was like right from the start. Oh my God, like this. She, but full disclosure towards the end, I mean, she was cranking it in the beginning, mm-hmm. but then. Oh, uh, failed right at the very end. And was one of the ones who curled up in the fetal position on the chair. Yeah, on so, the jump scare. A lot of the feet moving even and stuff like that. Even someone who had the, the idea of how to do it and was doing it correctly just made one mistake at the end and then hence the jump scare. Yeah, you can you can make a small mistake of making sound and stuff like that and not fail. But if you do something big like drop a nail on the ground, You're done. It's over. Yep. So it it I failed once or twice on it, and then you know I, I eventually slayed the the vampire. Well, from a studio that made a game called "I Expect You to Die," it's it's of no surprise that they don't expect you to just easily be able to open up coffins and well, once you fail, stab it, vampires. There's not that feeling of like, ah, oh, the game's ruthless, you know, it's cheating me. It's like, no, you you know no, exactly you, where you failed. Dude, you did it. I mean, I I was watching those the TV screens when people play it, and it, you can tell right from the get-go when someone aggressively does something that they're, they're doomed. Oh, absolutely. 
But and, their booth was was popping, dude. Yeah, representing just the VR popping. industry. Just really just them in Pin City there showing it off. A lot of people that hadn't tried VR yet, they're really kind of representing the whole VR industry on a... They said that to their technical advisor. Mm-hmm. That, their technical director? Yeah. So your you, shell is like in representation is 99.8% of VR right now. So Yeah. Like I said, a lot of people who hadn't tried VR. So that was really cool. And Dude, their booth was, it was cool. They're good. Such nice people. Yeah. Really good setup. And I honestly, I've, that was one of the best examples of using all of your senses, obviously, except smell to, to really do it. Like they had the sense of feel so good on it of like peeling back those, those nails, doing it nice and slow or, Moving that iron bar across, which you got to do so slow, you can feel the haptic feedback. Was it iron or wood? Whatever it was, that ceiling part, uh, you had to really use the haptic feedback in the controller to get an idea of like how much noise you're making, obviously as well, sound. So you're using all of your senses. The sense of touch in it is great. I don't know. They, they did a good job. And then the little puzzle to, to seal them as well that you got to do in a timely fashion. I admittingly did not try the the demo i was offered but i did not for the most vain of reasons because if i put a vr headset on it's going to flatten out just center flatten out my bangs that i usually push up so it's like i also have heard of your which they were doing a great job wiping down the headsets in between use i i I witnessed it mm -hmm. myself headsets and controllers everything the whole whole shebang wiped down but i've also heard your opinion on i yeah i mean on public vr i see someone like sweaty I was like, ah, oh, geez, you know, I don't even like putting on my headset. Headset, if it's at all, which Wet. with the which with the three is like, honestly, it hasn't happened. Yeah, you just you, you've always not laughed like about public headsets. Two, but... You didn't try any VR headsets last year, no, either. No. It's not. It's not. I will. Not really I will thing. gladly try your game. I'll do whatever. But you know, but they, you know, very the hospitality that Show Game showed us was was above and beyond. So I'm happy for them, and they did give us. Oh. Uh, an Among Us keychain. They hooked us up with a nice uh, T-shirt, which yeah. we can post photos of. It's I should go grab. I no should have gone deal. grabbed it, but whatever. It's a great T-shirt too. Yeah, so we nice, got a nice Silent t-shirt. Slayer one. A stress, uh, a stress coffin mm-hmm. when you're stressed out mm-hmm. from trying to kill vampires and can't. But I, I, I love the, uh, I love the Among Us keychain. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're simpletons. Pax East was a good time, like you said. Not really much VR, but. No, shell shell out there representing. I hope they come back. And I, I get schedules and you know it's and not cost easy as to, well. It's not easy to have to set up the booth and then you're breaking it down after the event. Mm-hmm. And you gotta be there, you figured, you know, nine to probably six thirty every day. It's pretty grueling. A lot of talking. So I understand when studios don't, but I'd love to see them be like kind of the make it their thing. Mm-hmm. Except you know, bring out more games, yeah. bring out your library. Just, I mean, obviously more people <laughs> have to, have to now work it, but. And for a game that wasn't finished yet, it mm-hmm. felt extremely polished. That's shell games though. That's yeah, what they what do. Are you talking about here? Yeah. There, there's no, there's no jank <laughs> in shell no, games. There's no jank. Yeah. They do such a great job. So also the I booth. I expect you to die. Yeah, that would have, that's a great game to show off. And PAX. I did roll the packs with our expect you to die bomb briefcase with the wires sticking out <laughs> yeah it. and also got checked every single time you went in it was inside the building. one time they didn't single me out to go through yeah because they would let me through without getting checked do you think an idiot would put fucking bomb on the case that's the part that cracked me up it's like <laughs> you're so focused on this case and they shoo you right in with a <laughs> stuffed backpack and i'm like oh this is too funny but yeah. i brought that upon myself walking around boston with a yeah you, it hit you right when you <laughs> right when you were in there. It, was, it seemed like a really good idea. Well, it was cool. Shell games were going to be in there. You get to bring there. Yeah, but, like I'm going to represent. Screw that. Everywhere I go. But shell games, man, they could have a a booth showing off their whatever latest game they have coming out. Silent Slayer, you know, have a booth show or another section sh- like you know headset demoing like that Dude, first level. Have, and I expect you those, to die. They could have one of those absolute monster sized booths, but the the people power it would take because mm-hmm. you figure you would need how many technical people mm-hmm. that's not even funny because let's be honest tracking has to be reset now and then someone has to clean the headsets after every use mm-hmm. and they did it meticulously mm-hmm. i mean there's no but hiding two headsets it. being demoed yeah you know? and now you're talking 
So, you know. Six to eight. Yeah. Then you have another one, though, showing. Uh, but to be selfish, yeah, we'd love to see them do that. Yeah. They would just dominate it. Good crowds. Yeah. Really good time. Even the booth next to them, which wasn't VR. Mm-hmm. It was a, a, a upcoming game called Another Pint. I, I demoed that. It was the one flat screen game I really dove, dove into. They had a pretty long demo time on it, too. It was like Till 30. Till you finish. Yeah. Yeah. And Till the demo's over. A couple people really took their quit. time. It's it's a top-down tavern simulator. It was a cool concept. It's obviously going to be for a PC and such. Yeah, no VR. No. But it was, it was fun. I, I love slow burn, real-time strategy games. There was a handful of them mm-hmm. at, at PAX that caught my attention. And that one it kind of has RPG elements where everybody that comes into your tavern has a unique pulse personality and you know you'll be able to befriend them they'll move into town ta- like houses near your tavern they'll become regulars you got to make drinks for them serve them what they like you got to build your tavern so i had a, had a really cool concept I, I enjoyed the demo a lot so good stuff at pax east this year hopefully next year a little bit more vr yeah, but be nice you know, to see meta show up as long as gdc is going on the same days i think that they'll steal a lot of the the vr show they can. Yeah. But we'll push for next year. We'll we'll plant the seeds now. Meta. Yeah. Please show up to PAX East and represent represent strong. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't want to say anything on air about my reasons why with the what they were displaying in other sections, but I never saw it with my own eyes, so I can't comment. Yeah. Uh PAX uh nonetheless, yeah. Meta yeah, you know Meta, what I'm saying it's like Meta should go there with like a booth of like thirty headset, it. pick their top titles. Crush it. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that's my two cents. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a, nope. a reason against it, man. There are so many people there that hadn't tried VR, having Dude, it, like curated it, titles of the best of the best there. If they had an inventory to sell the headsets mm-hmm. on site too, oh my goodness, yeah, up. people are spending big bucks there. Yeah. I mean, you look at all the vendors that were selling stuff, and it's like, damn, because it's not just obviously playing games. It's like you, tabletop games. They got the vendors for that computer. Aficionados, not just tabletop games, tables for tabletop games. Oh yeah, you buy everything. The nicest table you'll ever see for tabletop gaming. Rolls up flat or drop it down (laughs) like six inches. Gaming chairs, table, R two D two looking uh, skins, endless skins for your gaming computers, gaming case, fucking mouse pads that are eight feet long. Yeah, freaking crazy. Paxis is a good time. Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. I'm already looking forward to next year. Yeah, definitely. It's it's in, it's in our backyard. It's hard to not mm-hmm. not attend. Represent. Yeah. It's cool that it's in Boston. It's it's just a good event. Boston, Boston, Austin, Massachusetts. <laughs> and then we did do an interview with Shell Games that we'll play at the end of the inter, end of the episode. That'll be the conclusion for the news episode. Yes, it's talking with their producer Anna as well as their technical director Sam for the game. So I want to shout out Cat though, who was there. Yeah, she was just the the personality and the moxie this young lady has. I tell you, the moxie. No, it, it just seeing her energy with mm-hmm. working the crowd and talking to them, um, getting people to try the game, yeah, interacting it's, it's, with people. It's freaking four star. Yeah, no, they did a, a five out of five job mm-hmm. at their, their and that's booth. not taken away from every everybody there did a a tremendous job. Yeah, just got to give a good shout out to Cat. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, a lot of good VR news from this past week as well. But before we dive into that, let's do this. Otherwise, clearly, I'm going to forget. You want to grab that lawnmower, Sam, box? Right on the ground right there. Oh, the bag? Yeah, it's the bag, not the box. I'm sorry. Sweet. Lawnmower, Sam sent us some swag. Dude, this is probably the coolest thing. I know for podcasts, it's not the best, so I won't. I won't go long on this, but just for the video, I want to show uh, this part. They sent a custom grass gauge that says Rough Talk, Rough Talk's Grass Gauge. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty freaking cool. Metal. Then they sent a little caution metal sign. VR gaming ahead. Come on, frequent arm flails, which which is a good sign to have. I yeah, don't know why. not going to happen to you in lawnmower sim, but for other Shouldn't. games, I mean, weed whacking you might, and then swinging your arms back and forth. They also sent this nice vintage vegan candle. What makes a candle vegan? I thought candles are made of wax. Well, soy. They soy. have soy candles. That's true. That's true. 
So a nice candle Just, as well. I've never heard of a meat candle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fat based. Yeah. And then they sent this nice Bunzai. Zen Garden grow kit. Yeah. So that's cool. Huge with props the nice, to the lawnmower. With sim. the nice um, yard bag that's got all the pockets for the tools. and Sweet. So tools was, and all that fun stuff. That was a nice thing to get. Yeah, as well, you know, on the way back from PAX, come back home, we get oh. some lawnmower sim swag. And nice sticker, dude. Sweet. Lawnmower sim swag. What's cool about that is you were such a fan of uh, lawnmower sim before we ever started VR or anything yeah, whenever, like that. Whenever it hit flat screen. So of, that's of, when I started playing it. Yep. And then I'll do, to get a swag box, it's swag come, bag from a game that. With, with the name on it? Yeah. yeah how far we've cool, come. Man. The grass gauge is, is honestly uh, one of the top. Top ones is custom. Rough Tox Grass Gauge. Dude, I'm going to well, stick that in my yard. That's actually very useful. Exactly. It's so legit. Yeah. So cool stuff. And then, you know, like I said, back to VR news. Toy Monsters, a game I've been hyping up. Super excited to see them graduate from App Lab to the official MetaQuest store. They they have a release date now. April 11th. The game's going to launch for $14.99 on the official MetaQuest store. Which is a good deal. Yeah. I mean, the App Lab version's great. It's available now. You could grab it for a discounted price, then get it, you know, the full game at four, you know, that would be $14.99. I'm just saying, if you're going to buy it, why not buy it now? But the game's going to feature 33 levels across three worlds as well. It's going to, those are the main levels. And then it's going to have some bonus levels, boss fights, and an endless survival mode, as well as it has their mixed reality mode, which is my favorite way to play the game. Personally, it's a fun game. I mean, I, it's one of those, you'll go back to it. So, I mean, I, I'd encourage everyone, if you enjoy that style of game, jump right on it. Yeah. Plant $14.99 is a great price for it. Like, yeah. Honestly, solid. If you ever played Plant vs. Zombies. You love the, it. Yeah. You, well, if you liked Plant vs. Zombies, <laughs> yeah. you'll you'll love this, because this is like that first, first version of the mm-hmm. game where... You got pretty far through the App Lab version of Toy Monsters, too. You did some damage on it. Yeah, man. So... I'm I'm pretty happy they continued with it and are making that official official launch. Yeah. That's huge. And then another one. Graphics are nice too, man. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Simple gameplay, but hard to hard to be really good at. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of strategy involved. And then another one that's coming up, Soul Covenant from Third Verse. They got a release date on their upcoming JRPG VR narrative game going to be coming to psvr pc vr and quest what's interesting about this so it's going to launch on april 18th let me get that out of the way what's interesting about this is it's going to be 49.99 on psvr and pc vr but it's going to be 39.99 on the quest and then you can pre-order it on the quest now for 10 percent off so you can get some hefty savings on it on the quest version versus the other platforms i wonder why that is if it's going to be because of reduced graphics or what extra content, I don't know. I don't I'm, know. That's I mean, weird, I'm not, right? I'm that's, not going to lie, dude. That's steep. That's the first time that's I've steep. ever seen that, though. So I don't care what platform you're buying it on. It's like, personally, I'd probably wait for the reviews. Yeah. To see what people are saying about it before spending. We're getting to the 40, you know, 40 50. Yeah, $40 on it. We're getting to the 40, $50 range for VR games. Something nine to nine to fifteen. It's like I almost don't care what it is. It's it's You'll, probably going to be worth mm-hmm. the money. Like toy monsters, boom, instant buy. But you start getting twenty nine, twenty nine. You start raising eyebrows. Like uh, I hope this is something I really mm-hmm. like because you're just not going to take that gamble with it. And then the thirty nine. That's where you start it, to go. It, it, dude. And yeah. I'll tell you right now, if you put something out for forty bucks and it doesn't deliver, it's going to be overly relentless with the mm-hmm. comments the the readings it versus just doesn't play the expectations at example fifteen ninety or fourteen ninety nine is much different yeah dude well why would yeah you pay ten bucks <laughs> fifteen bucks for something if it's not like the greatest of the great would, at mm-hmm. the end of the day you're not going to be pissed or you're oh I be beat like, it in twenty hours be like shit I could only get one game this month and mm-hmm. I I spent thirty dollars or forty dollars and so I'm curious on that deliver, one so. Haven't had a chance to try it earlier or anything like that, obviously, but I'm I'm curious. If I did, about I would one. say, hey, it's, you know, it might be a steep price, but mm-hmm. it's worth every penny. Mm-hmm. But I I don't really know. Yeah, this one will get the the wait and see on me as well. It has like some hack and slash stuff, you know. Let's see. It could be the greatest thing since sliced bread. 
So I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just it's a real who's to say. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And then I love these the develop the studio behind this Atlas Five. They're the ones that did Madrid Noir, kind of the the experience that turned us on to the potential of you know VR narrative stories, VR movies, kind of yeah, cartoons, well, whatever. Specifically, VR animated films. Madrid Noir was great. I mm-hmm. loved it. We got to talk to the director of it, James Castillo. You know, that was a, a great experience. So Atlas Five, they have an upcoming Mobile Suit Gundam film called Mobile Suit Gundam Silver Phantom. Uh, and it got a new trailer coming out. And it's planned to come out, I believe, this year. So I'm excited for it. The, the trailer looked interesting. It's Gundam. It's obviously mm-hmm. an anime little VR film. But It says interactive, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that there are different choices that would change the direction of certain clips in the the experience, but I don't know if it'll really matter. Like a choose, not choose your own, but I know what you're saying. It's yeah, a branching I've, story. Cause I've seen, I've seen kind of experiences done before where it, that you have multiple choices, but if you replay it and pick the other choice, you still lead to the same thing, no matter what mm-hmm. it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter versus the choice you make here will 100% affect what you see at the end. It could also just be a linear story that needs your input to yeah, progress it. That's possible. So I I will one hundred percent watch it though. Well, just because the studio behind it, I was actually Correct. I was on their website and I was like, holy moly, they have a lot of VR films. I was like, I got some backlogs to do. Dude, VR films are freaking great. I loved the the food one. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what's the name of the? Was it Into the Dish? Yeah, not only this, it was Tar- Dish, Targo Studios. There we go. Yeah. Targo is the name of the studio. I was trying Dude, to think be, of it. Targo was dropping awards on their shit. They, yeah. they do such a good job. Targo and Atlas Five are my top, my top dogs I in that industry. That soul food restaurant in uh, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That's still on the. I still follow every one of those chefs mm-hmm. on the that were shown on the show. And then Amaze VR is kind of really upping the ante recently with their VR concerts and stuff. That stuff's mm-hmm. using kind of the best VR. It's getting film cooler, I've folks. Yeah, we're getting there. VR film wasn't really there when we first got our Once Quest the entertainment two. industry really latches on to like, hey, this is a whole nother avenue of because the amount of money you have to you have to make on a return for a movie is is different than a game. It's not even funny. It's like I mean, and as a consumer, I hear, oh, it costs them a hundred million dollars to make this movie. I would assume the movie would have to make a hundred million dollars. In order to be profitable, right? It cost a hundred. We made a hundred. We're at ground zero. So anything over a hundred. But nah, man, it's like if a movie's made for a hundred grand, it's got to do almost like half a bill. And it's like I never knew that. I thought there was the break even what the charge was, and then now we're making money. But no, it's not as simple as apparently what you spent and what you make in the entertainment industry. So they're they're a huge avenue that could. Dude, think of the companies that could come into the VR space and just, what if Pixar? To me, it's just about the VR think cameras. Think of Pixar, dude, well, coming that's... in and being like, you know what? We're going to do something just for VR. How good do you think it would be? I think VR animation is at a better leverage. I think VR animation is like better able to be leveraged now than live action with actors because I don't think that the VR cameras are there enough yet they're getting there Mm -hmm. but it's like rely on that technology to get better versus animation you can do that like a game experience that you know people will watch because of the and it's just going to come down to the name like if disney did one pixar did one people would buy Mm -hmm. into lucas did one madrid noir is a good example of the animation ones so hopefully it's something we actually see more of in the the future as well as as the technology gets better to actually do you know the the real humans yeah. and such. Huge props to Atlas Five too for securing licensing. They also did Wallace and Gromit, so mm-hmm. they did Wallace and Gromit in VR. Now they got Mobile Suit Gundam. Gundam, dude. Yeah. Gundam's a pretty big franchise. Since I was a little kid, isn't that crazy? That's pretty long, sure. long running. Mechs in general, a space fighting mechs. We had G Force in the seventies. Yeah, I wonder if and that then just it came sp- back. I, I wonder if. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the, I think they changed the voices from when I was a kid too, like they did some remastered with yeah. new voice actors. I wouldn't surprise me. Almost positive that I feel like they've they've done that a couple of times. Done it to the Flintstones a couple of times. I yeah, think. New, yeah, new voice actors and stuff like that. But nonetheless, again, huge props to Atlas Five. I'm I'm excited for that. 
let's do one more and then we'll take a little little ad break before I forget. But for the Apple Vision Pro peeps that want to use their headset on Steam VR, an app ALVR is now available to download and it allows you to, to use hand tracking and for you use hand tracking with Steam VR and pretty much fully fully utilize the Apple Vision Pro for gaming on Steam VR. Why would you? Well, I'm it's just not saying a gaming headset. <laughs> I mean, wasn't that their pitch? Wasn't that their shtick earlier? Like it's not a gaming headset. This is for production. Well, you know. They should ban Steam from being used on an Apple. <laughs> well headset. it's not able to be done natively. Can't be done natively. No. I'm just either, so. chops. I, I knew at the end of the day it's like the people spending the money on headsets are gamers. And yeah. They're gonna they're gonna figure this shit out. Yeah. They they want games. Somebody's gonna make an app. There's Somebody a reason that there's done. games available on that Apple headset. Well, even like, you know, the other week Sony announced that they were working on bringing the, the PSVR to, to be able to be used on the computer mm-hmm. for PC VR gaming. And it was kind of unclear if that was going to be like, are you still going to need to run it through the PS5? Can you go direct into the computer? How's it going to work? And then just last week, Sony pushed out an update that now when you plug in the, the PSVR 2, Previously, you would plug it in and your computer would detect it as a monitor, like a, a monitor screen. Now, when it plugs it in, it's detected by the computer as a VR headset. Still can't be used in like Steam VR or anything like that. That would require like applications that would do this all is, that work. But this is the grease job that Sony's getting ready to give the consumer who bought the headset. <laughs> like, damn it. Well, you guys no, need they're, to- they're going to. I mean, I I honestly would not be surprised if this is the way it carries out. Go look. We've now opened up the ability. You can go to Steam. You can plug it into your computer, but there won't be any more games coming for the our our actual library. Oh, I wouldn't see that coming. Uh, dude, nothing would surprise me. I wouldn't see that coming. Nothing will surprise me. Because we see games like Soul Covenant coming out in April. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of games still coming for the, well. I mean, then how well, much is Sony going to invest games still coming their, for... How much are they going to invest in their headset? Well, they didn't invest anything in the marketing too much. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, unfortunately, anything could happen with them, and I won't be utterly like, oh my god, because it's not. A, it doesn't sound like a bad headset. I've heard a lot of people who have used it who love it. No, it's just, it just the library. Like Sony's commitment to the product, mm-hmm. and I just don't think they're taking it serious. And like I've always said, if I ha- if I already had a PS5, it would kind of be like hmm, maybe I grab one. But it's the the requirement of of both. You know, that mm-hmm. was always the hassle, but it doesn't seem like a, a bad headset at all. I'm not hating on it. It's um, unfortunate that it didn't get the, the proper marketing and push and everything. We even talked about it, like they should have blasted it out to a hundred. Yeah, and that's, and that's not our freaking, it's not our, even our job. It's not, it's not know? our fight to fight, we'll say. No, it's like sitting here feeling bad for some multi-billion dollar company because <laughs> they just are you know, did literally drop the ball on well, marketing. I wouldn't something. say it, I wouldn't say it for feeling bad for the company i would say more for feeling bad for the consumer i feel bad for the people that already bought it or also the studios that you know took a chance and 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 as a consumer I, if i had any concerns about how much a company is willing to one of the things that made me comfortable with meta was their their constant reaffirming commitment to research and development and the 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 long road of the future of their intent with with virtual reality and the future technology, we're not even privy. It's like out there. It's in the wild. Like look at the amount they constant re- like come come get a meta hug. Look at the amount it's they invest okay. in VR software and hardware, That's gaming as well. It's like also, all I hear from Sony is like, oh, we're letting a whole bunch of people go. Also, also oh, well, we're closing I can't, some. Can't say anything about that because Meta had quite a bit of layoffs. No, I'm, as well. Who Close cares? The other week. Who cares? That's not the, the point at all to me is Meta's also saying they're willing to invest in the research. That, that's 100% So you get true. what I'm saying? It's like but the whole tech industry. Can't throw shade about layoffs, you know? <laughs> I will on Sony because they're not giving me any reassurance of a future. Like, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you, dude, I, like, honest to God, if you put a million cash and went, like, what's their three-year roadmap? I'd be like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I I honestly thought in my my true heart of hearts when that headset came out it was going to be like slammed in your face. There'd be TV commercials mm-hmm. pumping. They'd buy ad space on on Meta. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like and it wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. 
It's like my only involvement from the the PlayStation headset is creators who have it and used it and said something about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, again, why am I not getting any reassurance of, you know, I'm not getting a Sony hug, but I do get meta hugs because mm-hmm. they reassure you with, and it, they publicly say like, look, this is how much money. This is always the, yeah, they're going out of business. I expect to see us keep dumping billions into this. Correct. Basically. Correct. So why wouldn't I put my faith into a company that they're like, investing has a plan? into that all that VR stuff I mentioned before, but they're also investing heavy into AR, AI. That's that's a lot of their research and, what and development when, costs too. What happens when PlayStation Six comes out? What happens? Is it compatible? It should be. It would make sense. But sometimes things don't make sense in console mm-hmm. systems from one to the other. So I you know, I just I don't know, man. As a company, they scare me with their, mm-hmm. their VR. On their flat screen, their Xbox biggest competitor, right? So oh my god, they, they crushed it this generation of consoles. They, but, they did great on, on sales and stuff like that. But yeah, the VR commitment's a, a, a little bit of a different conversation. And I shouldn't even care, dude. I should be like, ha. Well, I feel for the studios, like I said, that took a chance and were like, all right, let's do the this. Consumers. And the consumers, exactly, who, who were like, because it, it's a trickle down. If, if a lot of headsets are sold... A lot more studios are going to be making games for it, and they'll want it. It's it's a better overall win for the studios and the dev- and the 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 consumer that mm-hmm. now has all these experiences. Instead, what's a big complaint going on a lot now is that when games launch, it's like the same version as the Quest version on the PSVR two. And then from the business standpoint, though, as a studio, it's like, well, we're not going to get the return on investment to to build a whole new build no, right off you, the get go sell enough on that headset then mm-hmm. they can update it for that headset but i get it it's like so it's a big trickle down so i don't I'm feel gonna too make 90 percent of my money from meta i mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry i'm not giving mm-hmm. you 11 percent. so i don't feel too bad for sony but i feel bad for the studios and the consumer in that situation even on meta's commitment i mean they just put out a thing last week of what what do they call it scene script like an ai scanning thing that they're working on. It's just in research now. It's not anything that's like on the Quest 3 with the next update or anything like that. But they were just showing off room scanning ability instead of, you know, you have to marking what each item is in your room and like that's a desk or whatever. They were just showing off the ability to, you know, pick up everything. Say that's a that's a desk, that's a window, that's a door, that's a couch, that's a bed. That way it just makes mixed reality experiences seamless. I mean, that, that should end the Guardian thing as well too right but that's just back to your reassurance on their future commitment it's like you wouldn't be working on something like that if you didn't have the the 10 20 no, year vision just, on it that's just what they're showing us but again they've they've been vocal since mm-hmm. day one of you know and no fucks given either because zuck took I, s- there was a point where investors were like begging them to stop doing it and they were like no we're not stopping this this at the time metaverse yeah. push so yeah, I agree. Get, get Zuck was pretty gangster about it. But let's take a quick ad break. You know, like that way, you know, before I forget, we we'll go through all the news and I go, oh, dude, we never did that. So like always, before we take our ad break, if you've been enjoying the podcast, subscribe, rate us five stars on your favorite podcast platform, or maybe just subscribe on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, smash that like button, as you always like to say. Hmm. All right. And then also don't forget, we have a great Discord community. Uh, full of awesome VR discussion, game meetups, all that stuff, as well as some other off top off topic discussion, like you know book clubs and you know stuff like that as well. So go check out the Rough Talk VR Discord. We also got a, a cool little Patreon server as well with some some cool benefits, like your name across the bottom of the screen on a ticker is one. Uh, there, we also do on air shout outs as well. You know you get access to our Patreon only channel in the Rough Talk VR Discord. So the Rough Talk VR Discord, anybody can join, but once you're in it, if you're a Patreon man member, there's a separate chat just for Patreon peeps as well. So cool stuff and kind of on the on-air shout outs. Just want to give a quick shout out to our, you know, the peeps on our on-air shout outs here. Huge shout out to Amelia, a Sim, Earth Witness, Carson, Generic Vibes, Jake, Crispy, and Shoes. So Huge, huge thanks to you all who, for your continued support, as well as, you know, just huge props to the people that tune in episode after episode. Oh, uh, huge shout out to the ones who came in for PAX. Yeah, we, we got to 
to see see some listeners in person. That was kind of mm-hmm. cool. You know, we go there expecting to see VR stuff, and it's kind of like surreal to be like, oh my goodness, here's real people that listen to the podcast. I mean, obviously they're real people when we see them online, but it's different. Yeah. No, in it's person. always it's always good to put a person with the a mm-hmm. screen name or just to hear how they really sound and you know. Yeah. So it was cool. Yeah. PAX is a good time. Hopefully there's more of that in the future. So let's see. But we'll be back with you after an ad break with the rest of our VR news. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code word ROUGHTALKVR for 20% off plus free shipping. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, or in the ocean. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word ROUGHTALKVR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code word ROUGHTALKVR at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. And we are back. Man, I got to say, the uh, the crash from PAX is, is definitely hitting. It's caught up to me. Yeah. You can probably hear us getting more and more tired throughout the episode. So we'll get this. I started off tired. There's no way I'm more, more lively at this moment. So. Yeah. How many steps did we, we do in those couple of days? It was over 20,000 a day. Yeah. So about 10 miles a day. Yeah. 10 and a half miles. We put on some. 11 miles. Some good feet movement, to say the least, with the backpacks and all the luggage. Well, that's and, the other thing is like. Plus the adrenaline dumps of it all. Walking around with a, you know, 10 pound backpack and then. I expect you to die suitcase. Buy, buy seven pound briefcase. <laughs> but I will say that we were, we were able to stash it at the, under the, the shell booth. So that helped. That, that was huge. Yeah. And, and cat like force fed us some water. So. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest part is those. We we force fed ourselves sandwiches the whole time. I brought so many sandwiches. Amelia sent in messages. Yeah. Make sure you guys drink water, eat <laughs> food, giving us like a food schedule of like common sense for conventions. <laughs> like I, I didn't even know it was a thing. No. Last year we didn't do the best with eating in eating? a timely we fashion. Ate once. Yeah. We so, had like one meal. So we did a lot better this year, to say the least. We got the same burger we and got the last year. And a handful of consumable drinks. It was funny, we, we went back to the same hotel to get the burger that we got last year from the same restaurant that we got it. They and, told us to fuck off. But they were like, the spot upstairs <laughs> has it. And then it all comes from the same kitchen. They had the yeah, same burger that's, upstairs. That's what it seems like, dude. And that was a damn, that was that burger was just as good as I remembered it the first the year. the one with the duck grease. I mean, they get duck grease fries. Yeah, they hit good. They hit good. That's a great, the only thing I think that we had, I think there was some caramelized onions in the... The one we had in the sports bar. Oh, they, that wasn't there on that one, huh? That wasn't there on the one oh, upstairs. Yeah. So maybe they cook it in the same kitchen, but because it's the different restaurant, mm-hmm. they just and I remember omit. Those, like, yes, you're correct. And I remember that caramelized onions last year was real good. It almost tasted yes, like sir. like pulled pork. Yeah. Remember? Delicious. It was like very savory onions. Uh, we got to go back to that sports bar one. But we ate good this year. So. Yeah. We were already looking forward to next year with it on the way out. So that's How many good. sandwiches did you pre-make? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. I, I packed two for each for three days, so which didn't a, make sense because we were heading back Sunday. I shouldn't have counted Sunday because I mean, honestly, dude, something could have happened that because we we'd eat one for breakfast, mm-hmm. theoretically one for lunch or pre dinner, mm-hmm. and then we'd eat something at night yeah. somewhere else for dinner. So I think if you know, we could have forced three down a day. Not a mm-hmm. problem. Yeah, if it wasn't for going out for dinner, a hundred percent made those with nice potato bread too. I love sliced <sighs> potato bread. South Boston's got good food. Yeah, they do. There's not like a bad restaurant in that area. No. 
It's just weird. Boston closes down early these days. 10 o'clock. It's weird. I remember when I was younger, Boston was like a, a late night. There are areas that were 24 hours, depending. And, you know, everywhere around us closed at 10. And I've had that same experience with my girlfriend before after shows. We're like, let's grab a drink. You know, it's 10 p.m. We're in Boston. And it's like the only things around are three, four miles away. What's going on? Dude, when it's 11 o'clock, 1130, and you're walking down the street and you're like, there's not a lot of cars out at all. Like, I, I don't have to stop at any... Not that you shouldn't, you know, but I'm just pull up to the corner and walk across the street. Now the mm-hmm. car is going to hit you. It's Holy weird. Crap. It's a strange feeling because yeah. it's like it is. It's a living city. And there are areas of Boston that are, I'm sure, whatever. But where we were. It was shut down. Yeah, man. Come 11 o'clock. You got hotel bars. Hope you don't get the munchies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's like a fisherman bar. Haba ba. <laughs> get, yourself a, get yourself a glass at the haba ba. With the fishermen and stuff. They nice, nice Irish. Need pub. a good drink after freezing ass all day on the those boats. Yeah, I looked, dude. We were looking at those fishing boats, and I'm like, because we've all seen the shows on TV, right? But when you're really standing at a legit fishing boat, not like a little thirty foot, but mm-hmm. a big fishing, you're like, this thing is a floating death trap. There's fucking nets everywhere that easily. You're, I'm not even on the boat, and I can picture the ankle getting caught in it. Well, it was also a chilly day. It's chilly and oh, windy. Oh, it was cold and windy. It was in the 30s. One of the days it was <sighs> rain. Yesterday, Saturday was rainy. And guess what? People want their fish, and guess who's got to get it? These guys and girls. And it's like, we were even saying, like, dude, how much money would it take? We were throwing numbers out there, like, getting higher and higher and not taking the bait. It's like, no, it would take me more than fucking 10 grand to get on that boat right now. And those like yellow fishermen clothes that water's clearly going to get under because mm-hmm. it's just the, the, the overalls that nah, man hats off to the people that get our food and we take, you know, we just order it, mm-hmm. make but it I easy gotta, for us. But I got to assume every seafood restaurant next to that dock has the freshest seafood <laughs> ever. I mean, literally comes right from there and goes to there, right? <laughs> so the, the best I don't, lobster. See a, I don't see a freezing processing plant on the harbor <laughs> you see that in florida a lot though no so good stuff that was a nice nice views from the hotel of the oh, harbor beautiful. too so great that time on the other side of uh logan airport mm-hmm. so back to the vr news kind of on something we're talking about about meta's vr commitment they announced a new publishing funding program i guess you could call it from oculus oculus Pu- publishing that they're calling ignition that they're funding new teams building games for the quest 3 they put out a nice statement that, you know, it was kind of in reference to the the hard times this year of the VR industry. There's been a lot of layoffs in the VR industry, studio closures even. So they're like, hey, it's been a hard year for the, the VR industry. We're putting out this funding round. So studios can apply for it. But it sounds like that they're looking for kind of newer teams that are, are of veteran developers. It doesn't look like that they're looking for like a smaller indie game, particularly, hmm, I don't want in this particular project. No, not seeking out the the first the time un, gamer, the unknown. They're looking for the established, know what they're doing. But I'll just say again, just another hug for Meta, letting you know that not mm-hmm. only do we do our own shit and care, but now we're gonna up the ante for mm-hmm. developers that we feel can can pull this off. So hats well, off a, a studio like. Other gate that came out with Dungeons of Eternity last year, they would have been a perfect candidate for this because they were like a four-person team of like really but did they need experienced. It? Now, well, look at the game that they That's put out without saying. it. They didn't need nothing. But I'm, I'm thinking of this. I'm like, dude, the things that are going to come out in two years well, because of this see. fund. I'm curious what what studios will be chosen to take advantage of this mm-hmm. and then what product we'll see as the result of it. But yeah. Just as, another good move for Meta. As we know, these funding, mo- funding rounds, they don't cause things to come out in six months you know games take usually what two to three years so you know we'll see the the results of this in that time but i'm excited this might be you know a game changer no pun intended for some studios to actually be able to make their project so cool stuff oculus publishing ignition and i think that they they actually announced that at gdc this year which no presence at pax all the presence at gdc Hopefully they they spread that out a little it's bit more. In your backyard, I yeah, get it. just like Pax is in our backyard. But we're I not, get it. We're not a multi billion freaking dollar company. Yeah, no, multi billion doesn't even begin to sum it up. And they have their own planes, dude. Just, <laughs> you know, multiple. 
They just have a load Boston. Just hey, shit up and come to Boston. Hey, they have a Boston office. I'm just saying. Right. They, they, they think, all, think that person bails to GDC? Probably. Right. Go hang out with the, the engineer. Know, maybe they were walking stuff. around PAX. Didn't even, <laughs> didn't even know. Incognito. Yeah. Have Ray-Bans on recording the whole time, you know? <laughs> uh, so nonetheless. Uh, so that was cool. I always love that that type of news. And then the Quest 2, which is tough to recommend over a Quest 3, but it's gotten cheaper and cheaper. Uh, months ago, it, they dropped Travel it down. Travel unit. They, they dropped it down to 250 months ago, and that was like, wow, 250 for it. And now it's $200 everywhere. They just dropped the price 50 more dollars for the Quest 2 down to $200. And they're doing something with Walmart where if you buy a Quest 2 for $200 from Walmart, it comes with a $50 MetaQuest store credit gift card. So if you're going to buy, you know, games from the library that you're going to spend $50 anyway, the headset's kind of like 150, right? That's look, pretty crazy. I look at that as the the knockout punch to the PlayStation. They just I mean they single-handedly just 150, you know, fucked them so hard. 200 with a $50 MetaQuest gift there card in the store and you're going to be like, "All right, what do I what do I want to get? What do I want to get?" And you're going to be like, "Oh, man." It's essentially going to cost me 150 bucks, and I can be in the VR game. It's a no-brainer. It's like, what the? If you like it that much, then the next one you can buy can be the $500 PlayStation one. So I, I think it was very strategic, to be honest with you. How long before we see $99 Quest 2s? Not long. Let's, let's see what Meta's next one is. <laughs> yeah, it's really you not know, long. It depends on... It, I think it... I think we've just reached, we're seeing a competitive side now start to come out and it is a little, it can be a ruthless, mm -hmm. you know, industry and it wouldn't surprise me at all if, if someone was to come out with something and Meta was like, all right, for the next 30 days, our headsets are $99 just to take your initial momentum and all that work getting up for that release day. And then they just, as a consumer, you, you might not even never thought of buying it before, but now you just feel compelled no, their their marketing is they know what they're doing. Yeah, so good stuff. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, man, just to, just to harp again on it, man, two hundred dollars. That's I would you recommend a Quest two over a Quest three to somebody that was on the fence right now? If I someone's push... never tried VR, I definitely tell them get the two hundred dollar unit because it's really only one fifty. So if you're getting a fifty dollar gift card from the very building you bought it in. You know, you're going to spend that 50 bucks on sun. But what's interesting is every time, because I, I have a couple of friends that are kind of on the fence about VR, but they've yet to buy a headset. Whenever I've given them the previous news of the Quest 2 price going down, mm -hmm. they all give me the same response of, yeah, but knowing the Quest 3 is out there, if I were to go for it, I want the best. Hey, well, they haven't bought it. Well, I know. So I know. You're, you're telling me two things. You don't really want it, which I get. But here's an opportunity. And let's do. Let's be honest. You know, I love the the Quest Three, but if I knew I could get a spare two for let's say one hundred ninety nine dollars, and I was going away for like seven days to the beach or something, mm -hmm. are you going to be really upset if something happens to it? Right? You brought it out there. Let everybody. You know, who knows? Maybe a family thing where you're going to mm -hmm. just pass it around. You can almost kind of carefree attitude mm -hmm. about it. It's not like. Yeah, you know, dude, I treat my three like gold, you know, mm -hmm. I cup it in my hand, you know, like, ain't nobody touching my thing. <laughs> Wait, 150 bucks? Or what if it ever dropped to 99? Mm -hmm. I mean, shit. That's what I can see. You might that. just buy some just to give them to people when they're like, oh, I'd really like to try VR. Hold on a second. I got one in my trunk. Click, click, click. Here you go. <laughs> you just got a trunk full of... They're a hundred bucks. Just start flooding the market with the last remaining Quest Twos. In fact, that are in Dude, inventory. Meta's just. I doubt they're making new ones. I doubt they're making new ones. I think they're just emptying their stock. That was sooner or later that stock runs out, and then the black market's just going to be like the. I think they're just going to be all over the market, Dude. <laughs> flooded. All right, here we go. I got this figured out right now. Oh my god, this is such a good opportunity to get them into the Brazil. I just don't know if you can legally fill a suitcase with well, quests. And hey, hold on, hold go on. right over. Now, if if it ever dropped to ninety nine dollars mm -hmm. with a hundred percent import, two hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. That's not, isn't that messed up? But do you up, see man? what I'm saying? <laughs> we just got it. That import tax is 
ruthless. We that that got mentioned when we talked to yeah. VR Monkey. Hundred percent importe. So it costs five hundred dollars here. It's going to cost a thousand dollars U.S. dollar there, which it's not like that. A dollar is a dollar. Send it in parts. It's it's not like you know. <laughs> not that I recommend taking it apart, but and it's worth mentioning too. That's a hundred or a thousand U.S. dollars if it's five hundred dollars, which you know. Cost of living differences, value of money difference. That that's a lot of money in Brazilian Rios. What if we could just airdrop like a couple of pallets into a of of Quest twos into a store? Just whew, and there's fields. Yeah, just, but poof. that's that's a good point. Is as the Quest two price retail price drops, mm-hmm. it also makes it more accessible for countries with market. Yeah, yes, countries with high import taxes. It's going to be a game changer. I'm telling you, there's there's a even right now, dude, two hundred dollars. All right, so here's how it is: a thousand dollars for a Quest Three, or four hundred dollars for a Quest Two. Mm-hmm. That's a six hundred U.S. dollar difference because of the thousand dollar import tax, yep. or a thousand percent import tax. Hundred percent. So if you if you're in a country like Brazil right now, it's kind of a big difference <laughs> to go for a Quest Two than a Quest Three, price wise. Yeah, unless you're really rolling in money. So let's see that continue to drop. So, well, actually, let's, I forgot Quest 2 isn't officially sold in Brazil no, either. But that's what I'm saying. You just bring them in. Mm-hmm. Because now the, the penalty for doing it becomes more affordable. <laughs> it's not going to cost you 500 bucks to bring a headset in. So cool stuff that it'll be interesting to see how, how low that price gets before their, their stock runs out. I doubt, I don't think that they're making more. Do you? I don't know. My gut says that they're I don't know how many they're empty. sitting on. If I had any idea of how many they're actually sitting on, mm-hmm. I would be inclined to take a guess. But I mean, here's where it gets weird, dude. People like nostalgic shit too, so it's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's almost worth grabbing one just to have one sealed. You know what I'm saying? That's not have it like museum style. Yeah. You're gonna have a VR museum. I mean, now it's the time Look to get at, an, a I mean, sealed one, dude. I never thought in my lifetime that I'd see eight bit gaming or eight bit gaming is huge. Game. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. People you hear love that sound it. I made. People love it. <laughs> There's a market for it. Ah, gross. But hey, that's what that's what some gross. people that's what some people say about your work sims with your lawn mowing and, and your farming. Say whatever they want and your I'll power washing. Back. So I, I, to each I live, their own. I lived through these graphics. I yeah. don't, why do I want to go back to it? <laughs> but I get the nostalgia. I, I get younger people who are like, well, I want to play games that they used to kind of like they used to play, mm-hmm. but with a modern touch. So mm-hmm. hence the, all the, the slew of eight and 16 bit games that there's a bunch people are still developing and they there's sell. a demand for them. Dude, I've, I've seen Dreamcast games come out in the last yeah, year. They're still holding steady. That's crazy to drop a new game for... To, to develop a new game for the Dreamcast. They still make Dreamcasts. Do they? Yeah. They still produce them? They have to. I think that they're all... Like, I got you a Dreamcast for Christmas. Yeah. That was not from... I think that was a refurbished one. Refurbished. Okay. So, I don't know if they're still made... I don't think they're still thing's producing in one. condition. I didn't see... It even smells like... It's new. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't think it's ever I don't think that, that one, I don't think that one was, was recently produced or anything. But Weird. Nonetheless. Yeah, so, no, it's cool. Last couple piece of news, kind of on the the Quest side as well. The the Quest 3 at launch, it came with Ascar Giraffe 2, and that was originally going to go till January, and then they extended a little bit, and now they announced that the Quest 3 is going to come with Ascar Giraffe 2 all the way until July. Day. It sounds like at some point they're just going to make it permanent. It sounds like they just keep, keep pushing it. it they just keep pushing it as it gets closer. That's just a that that's just going to end up a free game that comes with the Quest Three. They might as well just keep it like that as well. Put the code in the box, you know. <laughs> well, I, the fear with that though is, I mean, all, all honesty, and I think I know what they're doing is they might have to supplement a different game come a year from now because the relevancy of it's just gonna it's gonna be so far. Okay. So you're talking a year, like a, a year in the gaming thing mm-hmm. can be brutal. So there'll always be a free game that there'll comes with the Quest 3. There'll probably always be a free one, but now there it might be that next big one, and maybe there's a delay to that. Maybe so next year it's Grim. Pushing. I don't think they'll let Grim. So maybe next that. year it's Silent North, you know? I'm just being silly. I don't think they No, it'll probably me. always be one of their in-house studio games. Although, another good move they could make is if they did various different, you know, like they do Call of Duty bundles mm-hmm. and they do what... You could have a combat waffle bundle. Mm-hmm. Comes with all three, all three combat. games that 
when they're all out. Mm-hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Ooh, look at that. Dropping. And, and Grim is still being Dropping good on. little nuggets. Almost an hour into the podcast, you just dropped that out. <laughs> Did you ever think of that before? Or did that just come to come to your head now? It just kind of popped in. Yeah. Just thinking of the whole, because I never really thought of them taking out Asgard's Wrath. But no, it makes sense. Let's but say now, that. now that the more we see your dates getting pushed, I'm like. Mm-hmm. Maybe now Twisted Pixel Studios, the makers yeah. of, uh, uh, man, Path of the Warrior. Just got to think of the theme song, and then I remember the name. But I, I like being able to buy, like, a combat bum- bundle. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, it's going to come, and you get keys to these games, but use a, a good, solid developer to... It's mm-hmm. actually, a, I think, a good idea. I really wonder what Twisted Pistol Studios is up to, because they haven't uh-huh. done anything recently, and I loved Path of the Warrior, so I'm waiting patiently for it. And that's a meta-owned studio. Path of the Warrior 2. <laughs> that's what I want. I'm, I doubt they're going to make it, but that's what I That's what I really they'll, want. They'll shut us up with a song. I mean... Because, dude, that would be a great game to demo. Do a co-op experience. Mm-hmm. That one was just fun. Yeah. We should run it back sometime. Do the little, you know, the spin kick? Bang, mm-hmm. bang. Every, the boss on each level. Really good game. We so, crushed that one. We yeah, we blew through it. That was part of our original, like, falling in love with co-op VR. That, Crisis Brigade. Remember, uh... Rodent People Origins, the yeah, VR escape room. That was one of the first, first app libbies. The fact that there was a v- co-op VR escape room in 2020 that we Ooh, did I'm on high. the Quest. Yeah, that one was really fun. Then I expect you to die, of course. Yeah, the premiere for yeah. escape rooms, puzzles. We're already waiting for four. Or give me a DLC expansion pack. I can't I want say the, I didn't ask. Well, you, you, you said it right when we finished I Expect You mm-hmm. Die 3. I was on party chat with you. I heard I heard the freaking well, credits the, roll and you said when's 4 coming? I put it out there to the Shell Team universe during the PAX time. Mm-hmm. Obviously I was not given an answer. Mm-hmm. Just a mm, mm-hmm. not even a, not a confirmation or denial. Sir. Oh you know what I would love? Another I Expect You to Die. Mm-hmm. Well, I tried to slide it in like so like you guys are doing, I expect you to die for, of course. And, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> not trying to be shady, just being silly. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, if I had heard anything, I wouldn't say anything anyways. No, you're just saying it more as a joking fan. Like, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I expect you to die serious. The second it finishes, we want another escape room. And that's not to yeah. be pushy on them or, or anything. No. You know, I know it's selfish on us, but it's such a good series. It's like, I always want another escape room on there. And then I always feel like, oh, I'd love to be your like escape room test guy. <laughs> But then I'm like, man, I kind of wouldn't. No, because you like I, that whole like, polished I experience like the at the experience. end. Yeah. Yes, yes. I want to go on this journey. What are we doing? I'm telling you right now, that first level in the car, if I expect you to die one, not only does it still hold up, that's the level to show off at, at a convention like PAX. Even better. Because so you, many. You let people know when you die, the experience is over. Mm-hmm. Time's up. Mm hmm. Because guaranteed within a minute. Well, I think that's what they were doing for a lot of people at Silent Slayer. Some people they let do. Yeah, if it was twice. real quick, they'd let you. Yeah, go. but if they had like a long line, I think yeah. that they only let people try until no, they died. They did. They did a good job with the flow. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like anybody was. And I'm not gonna lie. Some of these lines aren't long, and I'm not talking Shell's booth. I'm talking others. And you're gonna wait 45 minutes, mm-hmm. and you're like fourth in line. You're well, like, holy shit! Even for another pint, because of how long their that demo was, was. Yeah, it was them. <laughs> it was a long wait. Wait it for was, them. It was long, but that's because they did, you know, like 30, 45 minute demo. Yeah. And huge props to their developer who was running the booth. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they had a couple people working the His booth. His girlfriend but was there. He was there. Another worker as well. But the developer Philip, he came over and gave one of the best. Pre, Breakdowns, yeah. Pre demo pitches I've ever ever it seen. Was, it was such a good description and pitch that the person that was in front of us in line to play it, like, had mental brain overload and took off. Well, I think he had somewhere to go because he kept checking his clock, but he was kind of wigging like, out. I like my version better. He, I could see him kind of mentally wigging out, but, uh, dude, he broke down everything to expect in the game, the mm-hmm. kind of current state it's in, the future scope potential issues you might encounter kind of like you know being reasonable there might be some bugs and and stuff like that but it was just a really good you know pre-demo kind of breakdown and yeah that was a great game as well so a couple more pieces of news uh mannequin the next in studio game from fast travel games i specify that because fast travel games they're gangsters with their publishing wing they do their you know they take a third party studio who a lot of times they've even done it where it's not even a, a 
brand new game. They'll take existing games that are floating around on App Lab, polish them up, move and get them to the official MetaQuest store. Graduate them. But then they, yeah, love that term. But then they also do their in-studio games as well. And their next in-studio one is called Mannequin. And it just launched an open alpha available to download now on SideQuest. Where, dude, the concept of this game, they put out a new trailer too. It's like mannequins versus agents. And the mannequins have to try to, you know, hide still, move and track down the agents and kill them. But you have to like hide still and transform into a mannequin to, to keep your place. And then the agents have to come by, try to find which mannequins are actually humans, and take them out. And it's, you know, last team remaining on it. I believe it was, what, three versus two? Mm, I'm not 100%. I'm, don't quote me on that. But nope. it's mannequins versus agents. It looks very interesting. I, I'm excited to try it. Yeah. I'd, I'd wonder if I'm going to have more fun as an agent or as a mannequin. But it looks like a great party game. It has a lot of potential. Yeah. So I, I cannot wait to get that on my I've never my really pause. never really been disappointed by Fast Travel. Fast Travel? No. no. They're no, last. They're one of the ones that if their name's attached to it on either end. Um Yeah. Publisher or board. developer. Yeah. because uh, they don't put through jank, so their last in studio one was Vampire the Masquerade Justice, which was a great experience as well. Mm -hmm. Dropped very close to Assassin's Creed Nexus, which might have buried it a little bit, but for it did. People that, that like those single-player narrative story games, dude, it's it's fun. You're a vampire. You're stealthy. You take people out. You got to hide in the shadows, suck their blood, eat eat mice, stay alive. You know, uh, Then be rats. Yeah. Yeah, those aren't mice. Those are full-blown rats. Mice are them cute little things you see in the woods. The first time I ever picked mice. it up and I saw it squiggling in my hand, and I just wanted... Uh, it's VR. You give me a gun, I might shoot myself with it. You give me something to pick up. I might try to eat it. So I put that rat up to my mouth and, oh yeah, Ow. feed, feed you time. You're a vampire. Yeah. It's either that or people. So <laughs> huge props to Fast Travel. And as well, their, their open alpha is, is free on SideQuest right now. That doesn't mean yeah, that the final. Yeah, cool. Doesn't you mean that. get the, to try it. Yeah. They did some earlier testing as well through their Discord. Now they're opening up a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if soon we see it for beta testing on App Lab and then eventually you know, the, the official store. But it's it's smart to get that beta feedback, get people excited. Contractor Showdown recently did a great job of, you know, getting people hyped, playing on the weekends and extending and it through it the week. That was yeah. great. <laughs> Love them for that. <laughs> I feel like a crack fiend right now, you know? Where's my... Uh, great, I'm itching. Where's my, uh, where's my showdowns recently, you know? So, nonetheless, that, that was really cool to see. You know, free, free open alpha. <laughs> yeah, where's your... Dude, the... I am... <laughs> People come into the Discord and say the dumbest shit. In the Grim Discord? Uh-huh. Yeah, you were talking about that the other week, too. Went down the other day, too. Some people come in hot. Just, like, I'll just say somebody, like, with that rust personality <laughs> figured out real quick that Grim ain't, Grim ain't the rust server. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But not, people always question, like, Grimm's it's not, never coming out. That was something I just read. No. I don't think this game's ever coming out. It's been months and uh, months since an update. Are you fucking kidding me? There's, like, there's updates every week they tell you about them. Mm -hmm. And I even saw uh, something in their post, like, did did Ghost of Tabor have <laughs> this following this far out before release? No. Oh, yeah, no, they were like, this channel's dead. There's so many more in Ghost of Tabor. And it's like, the I'm Ghost like, of Tabor what? have their 70K? Ghost of Tabor has one of the best VR discords. There's always growing. A thousand a week. But that wasn't the case prior to the game. What, a year before it comes out? Not. We're not talking coming out on the MetaQuest <laughs> store. We're talking about coming out on App Lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, it was weird. People get weird, dude. But I'm so excited for both Grim and Silent North. They're going to they're gonna crush it for sure. Oh, my God, yeah. I, I hear the yawn. We're, yeah, we're dude, breaking down. Sad. We're breaking down. So we got two more quick ones. We'll go, go through sleepies. it quick. <laughs> Angry Birds VR. Experience that you actually grabbed very early one into my, owning. One of my original purchases. Yeah. That was one of your first. I love the iOS experience. And it's kind of a sleeper in the sense that it's made by Resolution Games. That's one mm -hmm. that you want to do a great job, though. Yeah. Utilizing the availability of vr for it as well but they they're putting out a mixed reality mode for it as well which is kind of cool 
It's an older game. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a cookout update tomorrow. That's the type of studio that Resolution Games is. Play it in your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mixed reality for cookout, something like that. Right. Resolution will go back to not only just their new games, but like old. Their, any game on their library might get an update if there's new headset features. They're willing to go back and invest in those old titles. That's really cool. Resolution don't play. That's yeah. why. They're so gangsters. If, they, if they're like, you know what? Why wouldn't we add mixed reality mm-hmm. to this game? Which makes total sense, too. And when you play it, you'll kind of realize it. But and what's funny is because when I originally played it, I don't think mentally I ever had, like, the thought of playing it in mixed reality. The world they, they made is great. But now that mixed reality is a lot more appealing with the the color pass-through, it's like, oh, yeah, shit, that makes total sense. Why wouldn't I do it this way? Mm-hmm. So I just, I give them credit for doing it. Yeah. And it'll get more people interested in it. So there might be people that go, Resolution Games made an Angry Birds VR game. Yeah. I they never did. heard of this. They and did. now they go back and get it. So, and they did it really well. Yeah. I remember when we first got our headset, we were just kind of grabbing up a bunch of random games. That was one that you, you were like, dude, believe it or not, Angry Birds in VR. Wicked good. But better than, better than flat. Yeah. And I enjoyed the flat version. For iOS apps. Mm-hmm. I've even gone on flights. You know how they some flights will have that TV screen on the yeah, seat in the front? on the TV. Yeah, I've seen Angry Birds on the TV there. Kill a flight so easy like that. I've, I haven't seen those TVs on flights as much recently, but that's a different conversation. Uh, and then last little piece of news. Again, though, huge props to Resolution Games. The last one, uh, Mist, a classic game in flat screen. One of the, it's notorious for being incredibly hard. They released a VR port a couple of years ago, and there's a sequel to Mist called Riven. And now that's announced that that's coming to VR in 2024. Yay. So I was never big into Mist. To be honest with you, I didn't even play Mist in VR. I did play the Mist walkabout, walkabout course, though. Yep. So I, I know Edward, the the man behind all the ball designs and hiding in walkabout mini golf, for better or worse, some of his ball hidings. He's been ruthless recently, <laughs> the last couple courses. The last one was was real hard with Ice Layer for me and you. Yeah, it was. For just I don't know if that was just us, but particularly we had a we had a tough time finding the balls on that one. The, our first playthrough of it, I think we only found one or two balls. Yep. Which granted we didn't. We go weren't through. spending. We weren't. No. Really looking, looking. We were a little bit more strapped on time. We always try to do the. Let me just look around if I accidentally find one. Yeah, I found one or two. It was crazy. But you know, it's cool to see the sequel to Mist come to. To VR. Oh, yeah. Edward, when we talked to him, he was hyped for it because he said Mist was like his childhood favorite mm-hmm. game. I'm curious if Riven's as good. I'm sure he'll, he could comment on that. Yeah, he's probably moving fast for you right now going, yeah. He's probably already got it. <laughs> so that's coming he's in like, 20. It's great. What's cool is it's not like it was announced that it's coming or it's that's in the works. It's coming this year, 2024. Yep. So that's cool. Along with Grim. Yeah. So that's all we got for news. Fun episode today. We're tired from PAX, but still glad to to be able to record for you all, get in the this past week's of news. Well, you're ending it with a an interview, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Where well, I was gonna say, yeah. Now that we're we're done with all the news and all that, just as a little bonus, we'll top off the interview or the episode with our interview with Shell Games, talking to their producer and their technical director. Good times. Yeah, that was a fun interview. It's only like a, geez, I don't even I don't know. even know how long it is. I would say anywhere in the ten to twenty range, probably like ten to which really fifteen, means fifteen to thirty. So, Somewhere, somewhere in that. That's what it felt like, at least. It was. It, it's a little bit of a shorter one, but man, I really feel like we could have done an easy full episode with them, like oh, an easy hour. Yeah. They were great, easily. So stay tuned for that right after the the conclusion of this. And thank you all for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Subscribe, rate us five stars, and enjoy this interview. <laughs> Take care. Hey everyone, we're here at the Shell Games booth over at PAX East. Looks like we've taken over this booth for yeah. a few minutes, but <laughs> we've it's offici- worth it. We've officially hijacked. We've hijacked the booth. And today they're showing off Silent Slayer. They're You'll next- see it on that background on the shot, but yeah. It's, man, I just hopped in there. It's a good experience. But before we dive into Silent Slayer and all of that, today we're joined with Anna and Sam from the booth. But not only are they booth workers, they're not the booth. Than that. Yeah. They're a little more in the booth. Anna over here is the producer of Silent Slayer, and Sam is the technical director. So I don't know if there's two better people that we could talk to, 
Well, well I'll say one, of them, one of them was like a human cheat code for you playing. I'll say that. <laughs> My Game Informer uh, And the other one, guy. I think, is making sure everything's running perfectly for the player. So you definitely got the edge on that. Absolutely. But before we dive into Silent Slayer and such, uh, Sam and Anna, do you want to explain to our listeners a little bit more about who you are and what your role at Shell Games is? Did you want to go first, Sam? Or... Sure. I mean, uh, you know, I've been at Shell Games 16 years now, I believe. And I've had a bunch of different roles as I've been at Shell all those years. Um, I started just as like a, uh, a tech person implementing features on projects. Um, but more recently, I've kind of been a tech director um, for my past three or four projects. Uh, and yeah, Sound Slayer has been the most recent one, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, and then I'm Anna. I'm a, a producer at Shell Games. Uh, that's... Uh, unlike Sam, I've only been there about seven years. Uh, only. I've got, yeah, only, only seven, seven years. Only seven years. It's coming up. Uh, and uh, as a producer there, I'm usually uh, part of the like the project's leadership team. Uh, and that's kind of what I started at. Uh, my projects were smaller when I first started. Uh, I was kind of uh, recently, close to recent graduate. Uh, and then as I um, worked uh, at Shell, my projects became bigger and bigger. Uh, and this is my first uh, internal IP. So, being a producer, was that the path you wanted to go down to be a producer, or did you start somewhere, and that's where your path has taken you? I knew I wanted to get into games uh, as I was kind of picking my college. I actually went to the art college and wanted to be, like, a designer, and I tried that on. That didn't quite work. I I tried being an artist, and that didn't quite dive. Uh, but eventually my college program made me, uh, we kind of worked in small teams and I just kind of was the organizer and, and mm. it just kind of took off from there. So, so, yeah. so the secret to not being in production is be disorganized yeah. and they'll be happy with you doing the artwork then, yeah. right? That's and those right. notes are very good. I've seen them and they're very good. Well, that's the problem. You do impeccable work. Yeah. You're going to get recognized and we can't let you draw and do with that. No, that that's awesome. I would ask the same with you real quick. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, go ahead. 17 years with, with Shell? Yeah, 16 or 17. All in the, the tech side of things or was yeah. years? Okay. Yeah. And you've seen them go from more flash screen based to now exploring VR titles like Silent Slayer. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, when I started, I worked on a Nintendo DS game that was also like an internal IP thing. Um, and then I worked on various like attraction projects. I worked, I worked on Toontown. I worked on Pirates of the Caribbean online. Um, and then I started working at Unity and we did a bunch of projects in Unity. And then more recently I've been working on either Disney attractions or, uh, this internal IP project. I, I think it should be noted that everyone in the VR space, people think shell games. They just think, okay, VR, that's Top what VR they do. Studio. You do a simple Google search, you'll find out Shell Games as a whole is done much more than just the VR space. So that yep. that should be no. That's somewhere where I erred when I first stumbled on like like oh Shell, they're, they're our AAA studio of VR. I'm like, oh Shell's been around for a while doing so. That, yeah, I not just anyone. Rodeo. Go on the Wikipedia page for Shell Games and for Jesse Shell. Look up Jesse see, Shell. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you'll see some OGs in the gaming industry for sure. Well, um, I, I like the time periods I'm hearing because that gives me the feeling that. When you when turnover is not high, people are happy where they are. Mm-hmm. Seventeen years, six or seven years. I have the impression that's the company <laughs> culture at Shell because you you implied your seven years as a little amount of time. Right? Where seven years is a lot amount of time to say the least. But before we get too carried away on on you two as well, today we are talking about Silent Slayer. We are. It's a pretty badass game, but I think that it was it was shown on uh, the Rough Talk VR showcase. Yep, a little kind of. Behind the scenes making of. And they have put a totally different twist on vampire slaying, per se, than, like, what the brain might think. Yeah, it's vampire slaying meets I expect you to die puzzles. It's awesome. But I don't think that we could have two better people to explain exactly what Silent Slayer is. Uh, So either one of you, do you want to explain to the listeners exactly what Silent Slayer is? I'll let you do it, Anna. Okay, thank you, Sam. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Silent Slayer is about assassinating vampires uh, by uh, breaking into their coffin and disarming all the traps that they have uh, laid out to protect them uh, with the advice of a magical book. You didn't get to see too much of the book, uh, but you probably heard him say, like, hey, don't do that, maybe do this instead. Uh, so the book is kind of, like, serves as, like, kind of a reference point for the players. 
uh, you work your way up uh, a clan. Uh, basically, uh, you start from like the, the people who are maybe a little bit lower in the hierarchy. Uh, maybe their defenses aren't as great uh, because they're new to the game, right? Uh, so as you defeat each vampire, it does get harder and harder. Uh, the traps get more elaborate, uh, and there's more actually uh, on the inside of the coffin. Uh, today, you kind of mostly did the outside, but uh, as you get through the game, there's more stuff to do inside the coffin. And, like, this isn't my first time using VR, and I messed up. I, on, you know, I, I broke the nails. I video dropped the nails. footage of at least three times with a coach. Yeah. And you still mess. So patience is key with this. Patience yeah, yeah. being quiet. Yeah, it's a different vibe. I don't think there's, you know, we're talking about it. There's not a whole, there's not too many games that have this sort of like slow, be really careful and, and kind of precision with, you know, be careful with your movements type of games. So that's one thing we're really excited about is just that. I like it because yeah. usually people go to speed things is, you know, that's the. Guilty. The, the, yep. Well, I, I watched it. Yeah. You, you were caught. <laughs> Even when we tell them, we'll be like, be careful. You don't want to wake up the vampire, and they're like, "We got it." Yeah, well, like, wow. two, <laughs> that's exact. Two seconds later, you go, "Yeah, I know to put the nail down." Quiet. And you you knew from the demo, you got to be quiet. Mm-hmm. You can't make a lot of noise. So that says that exactly how challenging it really is. If you went into it knowing a little, and still were able to to rustle up the the same mistakes, yeah. <laughs> and there's no worse feeling as a gamer than when you go into a game, you you lose or something goes wrong, and you go, "I don't feel like that was me. I feel like that was the game." Yeah. But in Silent Slayer, you make a mistake and you lose, you instantly know it was because of you. You all did a great job matching the feel. If you go too fast, boom, it's going to pop out. You know, you'll feel that little bit of haptic feedback just letting you know you're going too fast. So how much work did that take to really get that quote unquote feel for the Precision. game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was important. I think, you know, we wanted to give good feedback so you knew when you made mistakes and why you, you know, what you did wrong. That, yeah. Like you said, that, that was important to us during development. Yeah, and the story that we want to tell is that you, you just start off like not knowing, you know, the book kind of kind of grabs you and it's like, hey, come come help me do this thing. Uh, so we tried to mirror that experience where you're like, you don't really know much, but as you get better and better, we kind of take the hands uh, off the wheel. We also didn't want players to get too frustrated. It is a pretty hard game, and we didn't want people to feel like, oh, I, I'll never be able to get this. I imagine if you beat the whole game and then you went back to that same puzzle I struggled with, it'd probably be a breeze because now you know it more advanced complex you features. Would and how I like, I like that it's forcing a little bit of patience, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just from a, a consumer standpoint to have a different pace than the normal. I'm just going to go in guns blazing. Let me try to get something as fast as possible. Where from what I saw, it doesn't look like that. That option is not on the table, correct? Yeah, and after you fail, after you fail an encounter, and you got to do the thing again. It's even harder. <laughs> <laughs> I was even thinking that while I was playing. I was like, "This is the game. I know I'm going to reach the last step on and, uh, and lose and go back to the start." But you know, you know the mistake you did wrong, and and that's huge for it. So, I I noticed that there's a little bit of lore in the book when you open it. it was kind of telling you a little bit about the vampire that you know you're going to stabby stab stab. How much? Is lore a part of this game? Is it more you just kind of go coffin to coffin, or do you really have a big overarching story in the game? Uh, there is an overarching story, um, and you get it delivered through a couple of different vessels. So the book is definitely a good reference point. Um, the book also gives you a little bit of the spiel. Uh, you didn't get to experience it in the demo today, but when you're in that safe space where you're kind of putting together uh, kind of like a, a giant, almost like a jigsaw puzzle, like a 3D jigsaw puzzle, jigsaw puzzle uh the book actually kind of tells you like oh that person you just defeated is this person and who you're going to go to next is like this person and so there's just a little bit of like uh a trickling of like what what is happening uh throughout the different encounters with the vampire so i i didn't see all the vampires i only saw what you played what was in the show are there historically accurate vampires in this or are these all created by shell games you meaning like matching existing vampire lore Maybe they're real. I don't know. I'm just saying, but maybe somebody has a name of some that may or may not be. Yeah, I'll we, say as real as vampires could be. We we definitely created our own cast of vampires for okay. this thing, so they're all unique. They're all unique vampires. Yeah, we. I think we pulled. You know, definitely thought about like, oh, what what does it mean to be a vampire? What you know, what are some characteristics? Because we didn't want people going in and being like, that's not a vampire, right? Uh, but we also wanted to make vampires feel a little bit more fresh, like draw from different. 
uh, sources, not just like the European vibe, but other uh, areas in the world. I mean, it's, it's a tough thing to do because you're working with material uh, vampires. You, you, every little kid in the world knows what everybody has their own image of it. So how do you keep that? So, yeah, that, that's a good balance. If you're able to keep traditional vampire, we'll say, but then add the mix to make it your own vampire. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, it was also important to kind of be inclusive with it, right? Like have have a variety of vampire characters. Um, so yeah, you to stab good. everyone. Yeah. Which is funny because I picture awesome. people in the studio having their own personalities for each vampire, even though it's you know it might be in a coffin or whatever the case. I thought the whole direction of knowing that Shell was doing a vampire game at first, I was thrown. I won't lie, we just came off. I expect you to die mm-hmm. three, which some of amazing, our, yeah, some are of the like, best puzzles I've ever played in uh-huh. VR. Yeah, number one go-to for anybody looking for a challenge. So I was like, oh, they're doing a vampire game. But then I saw there's puzzle elements yeah, in the game. Hear, have you heard the story of how it started, kind of? That's where I was hoping to go with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a, you know about the, how we do kind of a Jam Week thing? Yes, show? that I've heard. So this this did come out of Jam Week. So it was like, a, it was a project with a group of uh, developers, you know, during a time where we take a week off from our normal work and everybody gets to work on a thing that they feel passionate about. And this project came out of that. And like, it was kind of a, on the jam week that we did it. I, I actually wasn't on the team and I wasn't on the team, but, but like, it was a big hit like that week. Like everybody okay. was excited about it. Everybody was like crowded around because it was kind of fun to watch people play and you're like kind of rooting for people and then they get the jump scare. So it was like, it succeeded a lot on that day. And it, it, I think it got everybody excited about it as a project. And how bare bones was that game jam tech demo that everybody was falling in love with? I think visually it looked pretty good, honestly. Really? Right? But it was like one level and it was like a little janky because, I mean, you know, we have a week to build it. But it was like it kind of sold the vibe of what, what it could be. Sort of. I, I am amazed at what comes out of the hackathons, jam weeks. Mm-hmm. You give people a little bit of time and the tools and good material. It just it blows me away because my brain is like, it'd probably take me years to do what took one week of. And is games that the studio decides to go with coming out of these game jams, is that a, a common theme? Or is Silent Slayer the first one to become a full-fledged no, game? There's been a few. There's been a few. Uh, Enemy Mind, which was a shooter game that we made a while back. Uh Oh man, there's another one. Uh, there was like a Star Trek kind of like parody game that that we made. That was a Jam Week game. I love uh, that. It was like on Steam. It was like a Steam game. Um, so yeah, there's been a number of them. Yeah. The concept of the j- the game jams is so cool, and you see the results of it. Look at the the type of experiences that we get because of it. And I know the game's still in development, so maybe it's a a loose number. But do you have right now, you know, a vision for how many vampires and levels you want to see in the final game? We're not going to share okay. that at this time. Uh, yeah. Secret information. Secret yeah. information. We tried. Yeah. Had to, had to at least poke into it. Will there be a second yeah. one? But I guess yeah. we are aiming for four to like four to six hours is where is like okay. our good spot. So we're trying to aim for that much gameplay. That yeah. feels very similar to I expect you to die. Yeah. One, two, and three. Well, and just like I expect you to die one, two, and three, you finish that final level. You could sell me a DLC or an expansion pack the next day. I, I instantly want more <laughs> levels. I kind of have the feeling it's going to be the same thing with Science Slayer. You stab that last vampire, you're gonna go. Oh, what I, I want what I want to do to to get another. I just want to so. kill a little more. <laughs> Is that something on the studio's mind? Of course, it, it all depends on how the game does at release and everything like that. But is that already something in your brain? You go, oh yeah, there's endless potential with this. I don't think I have an answer to that question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, we want the game to do really well, <laughs> and and how well it does will probably depend how much we work on more content. But yeah. Understood. I can, like I said, I can totally see this being the game that I finish, and I'm itching for more. I right never finished the shell game and didn't want more. That's a good. So point. I, I wouldn't think this would be any other. That's a good point. So I got right. one more big one before, and then I'll pass it off to you if you have anything else. I know that uh, Anna and Sam, they're both busy here. They've working, been working their butts off today. You see the booth, dude. dude every time we walk past this booth, it's wall to wall, and we're t- we're stealing them right as the convention. We had to you know, wait the for the convention hall. to close just so we could see the banner. Yeah, and when they're ready to go home and get some rest, we're saying, no, so now's stay a little bit longer. So uh, one last question to ask on my end, then I'll pass it to you. Since we have the producer and the technical director, it'd be foolish not to ask, do you have any tips for somebody that's listening that's going to go play Silent Slayer when it comes out? Do you have any tips for them as a new player? I would take it all in. Like, 
listen to what you're doing, feel what you're doing, kind of what you did today, because I think that goes a long way to understanding like what, how do I get past this? I think it's very easy to kind of just rush in and be like, I'm just gonna uh, move really fast. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, awesome, awesome intention behind every action that you do in the game. And it's cool to get jump scared too. You know, I think we, we try to like teach you through uh, through failure too. So you can you can fail and then get back in there and like you know and learn something from that too. That's awesome. I'm I'm excited. I didn't play the demo. I was watching you play the demo, but like I want to know how the sound score is for it. I can only assume the sound's going to be good. Well, the sound effects are going to be good. The gameplay looks super smooth while you were playing it. So well, I, I have nothing but. I'll tell you right now, it's one of the only VR games I've ever played that utilizes every every one of your senses except smell. You need to use feel. <laughs> you need to use sight. You need to use hearing. It's like all of your senses. You don't need to. I could have busted out but, some garlic. or You know, really utilizing all of your senses except smell for now is, you know, a set, to me, essential for completing the puzzle. So that's a really cool element. You're locked in. You're laser oh, focused. Dude, I won't lie. I was just watching on the TV, but yeah. it was it was... Pretty cool to see. So we know Sam and Anna; they're they're busy people. So no, I don't want to tie them up. I know we still got. <laughs> we're only what halfway through packs. Still yeah. a couple more days. Saturday, Sunday. Saturday's always wall to wall. So what we saw here, maybe if I stand way across over, I'll catch a glimpse of the booth. But <laughs> I I think, I mean, they're representing the VR space really well, and I think the popularity of it's going to show. So I'm just grateful that you were able to take 15 minutes as you're ready to call it a day, but. Yeah, thanks. Uh, no, we appreciate that. No, I, I, I can't wait for the release. I'd love to get somebody back on after the release. Let the dust settle. Everyone high fives can have a party. Yeah, and I know you say depending on how the game does, I'm very confident in this one. I think when word gets out, people feel it. You know, they really go, dude, you have There's a reason we say Shell's the AAA studio of VR, dude. It yeah. just, it's. Yeah, we're the, excited that people play it. So hopefully the reception from this you know, pack showcase gets out. And then, you know, when the game's out, I think it's just going to be a wildfire from there. I would so. call it, it's a home run. So thank you again, uh, Sam and Anna. Like, like we said, we know you guys are busy working hard today. So appreciate you taking the time. And for the listeners, go wish list, you know, silence layer, go, go keep an it. eye on yep. it. Yeah. You don't want to miss this one. Thank you so much. Thanks.